Well, good morning. We are here. It's Thursday, believe it or not, the 4th of November. This year is moving along, and this is our first uh, weekly devotion in November. And I hope you have your Bibles with you as we finish up on the uh, five doctrines of the Reformation leaders. <coughs> Excuse me. Today we're going to talk about um, only God's glory. Everything is for God's glory. So let's begin with prayer. Father, we thank you so much that you've given us this opportunity to meet together, to look into Scripture, and to acknowledge you as Lord of our life, our Creator, our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend. Be with us. Give us wisdom from above. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> You have to forgive me, I'm not sick. It's just this time of year, I just have the urge to cough sometimes. It comes with old age. You might get there too. But uh, as we think about a believer's life, we're not going to grow. We're not going to mature in Jesus. We're not going to be more like Jesus. We're not going to fulfill the will of God in our lives. We're not going to have godly desires unless we are found spending time in His Word, with His Spirit, seeking Him, that we might know and understand Him, His ways and His thoughts. And so, as we think about these things, it's only through Scripture is our authority. It's only by God's grace. It's only by our faith in Jesus. It's only by Jesus. And now, it's all for the glory of God. And so, let's look at uh, Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 today just a few verses we're going to look at and throw out some thoughts for you to chew on uh, but in Revelation 4 11 it says worthy are you O Lord and God to receive glory he is worthy of glory and honor he is worthy of honor and power for you created all things and by your will, they existed and were created. God created everything. He had the power to create it. He had the knowledge to create it. He's ever-present in all of our lives at one time. He is spirit. He is just. He is righteous. All glory goes to him. You can't say any of that about me or anybody else that you've ever met. <clears throat> So God is worthy of all glory. It's stated so in heaven. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 3, we read these words. For Jesus has been counted worthy. He is counted worthy of more glory than Moses or anyone else. As much more glory as the builder of the house has more honor than the house itself. If you're a contractor or you make things, uh, what you make is just there. It has no life in its own, its own self. It has no worth in its own self. It's all what you give it, all what you did for it. And so the builder, the creator, has more glory than what was created and what was built. <laughs> Excuse me. 1 Thessalonians 2.12 says... We exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God. If God created us for his own purposes and for our good and our blessings, then we need to live unto him, acknowledging him, honoring him, being holy like him and righteous like him. It says a manner worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. As, uh, as people who have been uh, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, that salvation, uh, God at that point calls us into his own glory. He desires us to experience his own glory. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, if you've repented of your sins, placed your faith in the fact that Jesus was the Son of God, he came and lived on this earth, 
He lived a sinless life. He died to be a sacrifice for your sins. And by his blood and your faith, you are cleansed of your sins before a holy God. And he has made you holy and righteous by this fact. He, you have been called into the glory of God. And so that's only for believers. Uh, people who don't believe, who reject this uh, idea of Jesus dying for them, who reject the idea of sin and disobedience and disbelief, uh, they, they aren't called into the glory of God. God desires for them to, and he offers for them to. But by their rejection, they, they uh, dismiss the calling of God. 2 Thessalonians 1.11 says, To this end we always pray for you, that our God may make you worthy of his calling. Once again, God calls us. We need to live worthy unto him, but we can't do it on our own. That's why he's given us the Holy Spirit. The believers have the Holy Spirit of God that indwells them. It says, worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that indwells each believer that allows them to fulfill the calling in their life of coming into the kingdom of God, living for him, honoring him, and experience in his glory. Revelation 5.12 says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Jesus, who was slain uh, for our sins, is worthy to receive power, wealth, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessings. Jesus is worthy because he was sinless, he fulfilled the will of God in his life. He was obedient unto death. And he calls us to live such a life also. He lived a life of sacrifice. Then in 2 Thessalonians 1.12, we read these words, So that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. See, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And if we obey him and follow him, our lives will glorify Jesus. Our lives will be light and salt in the world. People will see the difference in us and they will look to God and bless God for the difference. It says, And you and him, according to the grace of our God, it's all by God, and the Lord Jesus Christ. If he did it all, and it's all by him, by his wisdom, his power, his presence in our lives, then he gets the glory for it. We can't boast of anything except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. We can't boast of anything except that we know our God and we understand him, that he desires justice, he desires holiness, he desires righteousness, he desires mercy in our lives. So these five things, scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone, Jesus alone, God's glory alone, they, the reformers built the Christian life upon. Understanding scripture by these five things. Uh, understanding the Christian life by these five beliefs in scripture and in God. And so if we would do well in our lives to hold these dear too, they will keep us from getting off track. They will keep us from going off in a tangent spiritually in a doctrinal chasing of rabbits and going down the wrong trail. They will keep us following Jesus. So I pray that you're blessed today as you follow Jesus, as you seek him, because if you seek him, you will find him. And the reason for that, and I can say it assuredly, is because he says, I want to be found by you. He wants you to know him. May you be blessed today in Jesus' name.